Hello everybody, hope you guys are enjoying today. Today we're going to be looking at your hurricane season forecast, which is going to be going from the 1st of June all the way until the 30th of November, which is your hurricane season time frame. We're going to be going over your sea surface temperature anomaly forecast, as well as your wind shear forecast, your development forecast, and then also your overall forecast at the very end of the video. We're also going to be going over uh, what type of Enzo we're going to be going into, which I'll explain uh, in just a little bit, as well as where your main development region is, and also your current sea surface temperature anomalies and uh, actual sea surface temperatures. So let's get right into it here. Now, first thing that we have to look at is where your main development region is. Now, uh, this map doesn't include uh, Africa on it, but Africa would just be right to the east uh, of uh, the edge of uh, of the right edge of your screen. Uh, so right uh, to the to the uh, right there, you're get, that would be where Africa is. And basically, from Western Africa eastward or westward all the way until you hit about the Caribbean is where your main development region is. Now this isn't where your big, super strong hurricanes uh, develop. This is where your uh, this is where they kind of start out and then they move their way to the west, usually into the Caribbean or into the Gulf of Mexico or through uh, closer to Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, and that's where usually your hurricanes would track. But this is where they all get started and this is where they all develop. Now, something that's very important for hurricane uh, development is your Enzo pattern. Now, what is an Enzo? Now, this is uh, basically, uh, it's you might have heard of these terms, El Nino, La Nina, or a uh, neutral pattern. We look to go into a La Nina would which basically something that's very important for uh, development is you don't want to have too much wind shear and with a La Nina you're you get very little wind shear out of this so uh, over this area uh, which is where your storms will be developing you really don't want too much wind shear and uh, that's what you're looking uh, to see and some uh, a way that we look at your Enzo is actually looking at your sea surface temperatures and now off the coast of South America, right or right within this area, you would want to see a lot of blue over this area, and it does look like you're actually going to get a lot more blue into that uh, region, which would indicate a La Nina. Colder temperatures in the Atlantic indicate a La Nina, and it looks to be a weak to moderate La Nina, which would actually uh, uh, significantly hinder your wind shear, which is very important for your hurricane development out in the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and through the Atlantic. Now, this is going to be your Atlantic hurricane season forecast, and then I... Uh, if you guys do want a Pacific uh, hurricane season forecast, which you can guys you guys can let me know in the comment section below, I'll definitely uh, prepare some more graphics for that, and I'll put out my Pacific hurricane season forecast. But that's only if you guys uh, want one. Uh, so definitely tell me in the comment section below. Now let's zoom in here to your Gulf of Mexico and your really your North Atlantic view, and you're seeing over the Gulf of Mexico, uh, anywhere in the reds, the oranges, the yellows, that's above average temperatures. Now this is in Celsius, so uh, it's not exactly a conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit, but generally, anywhere in those darker reds, that's where it's going to be warmer than normal. These are your current sea surface temperature anomalies, and you're seeing we have very warm temperatures uh, or sea surface temperature anomalies through the Gulf of Mexico, which this isn't where they're going to really develop, but this is very important because it will help strengthen these hurricanes if they do move through the Gulf of Mexico, as well as you get uh, to the eastern side of uh, Florida, you start to see very, very warm temperatures, and that's all the way up the east coast where you see those very warm temperatures, and then you start to get a little bit of blues mixing in, indicating some colder than normal temperatures, but generally through that development region, you're seeing primarily slightly above average temperatures or close to near normal uh, sea surface temperature anomalies. Now, here is your t uh, current temperatures. Now, usually you're going to want temperatures above 79 degrees in order to get a hurricane to form. Now, anywhere in those yellows, oranges, pinks, reds, those that's above 79 degrees. I know it's in uh, Celsius, so there's nothing I can really do about that. Uh, so I do apologize for that. But once you in the once you are in the yellow, that's where you're uh, able to get uh, hurricane development. And of course, this is uh, as of right now, but it is going to move further and further to the north. So depending on how far north that is, that could depend on whether you get maybe an east coast uh, east Coast uh, hurricane uh, like we saw with Superstorm Sandy or something like that. That would really depend on uh, stuff like that. Uh, but definitely
definitely it looks like your your uh, line of 79 degrees or about 80 degrees is going to be pretty much from North Carolina eastward at least and that might even push a little bit further to the north so uh, really those sea surface temperature anomalies are really going to play a very very big role into this uh, hurricane season forecast now here is your current sea surface temperature anomaly forecast, and this is again going from the 1st of June all the way until the 30th of November. I am show I am forecasting slightly above average uh, temperatures in terms of sea surface temperatures through much of the northern Atlantic here, all the way from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to about uh, western Africa, uh, off the coast of Africa. I am expecting above average uh, sea surface temperatures now. Here's your next layer of above average temperatures, and I do expect your uh, most above average temperatures to really be within this area from about Cuba and then westward through the Gulf of Mexico and then kind of along the east coast until you hit about uh, Delaware and New Jersey. That's where I expect your uh, moderately above average sea surface temperatures to be, and then your well above average sea surface temperatures I expect to be there for off the coast of Texas, off the northeastern coast of Mexico, and then uh, through the northern Gulf of Mexico, I am expecting well above average sea surface temperatures to continue throughout that region. Now, that's not going to really help with development, but that is going to help when your storms do track through that area to potentially make them a little bit stronger. So, I do think you're actually going to get really strong uh, storms, probably category one, two, three, maybe we'll get a little bit higher with, uh, than that. And I'll definitely be putting out hurricane forecasts as, you, as we do get later on in May through June and then all the way through the hurricane season. But if you do get any hurricanes to really track through the Gulf of Mexico, you will probably see some stronger hurricanes, probably over a Category 1 or 2, uh, if you do get a Gulf of Mexico track straight through uh, the Gulf of Mexico. But if you do get along the East Coast, it's probably going to be a little bit weaker. You're not going to have as warm sea surface temperatures, but still, they're above average, uh, and I do think that's going to help uh, generally with the development of those uh, hurricanes. Now, here is your wind shear, also something very important with your development. If you have wind shear uh, while you're developing your system, uh, that's really going to hinder the development. You have your winds, usually your systems are going uh, from uh, from east to west uh, as you get further into uh, further south, so right around the central and northern Atlantic, your winds are kind of going from, uh, from west to east. Now, if you're getting wind shear, your wind shear is always going pretty much uh, this direction. They're al uh, almost always... Uh, going against the flow. So if you do get wind shear, that's going to hinder your development because your hurricane, let's just say this is your hurricane right here. This hurricane is moving straight into opposing winds and that's really what's going to weaken your system. So as you get into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, through the Caribbean and then through parts of the Atlantic, I am expecting some below average wind shear because of this El, El Nino, uh, uh, La Nina pattern that does look to set up. And I could have put a, a moderately below average area, but uh, wind shear is one of those tricky things to forecast so I didn't I don't want to put too much certainty into this and I'll probably update this forecast as we get into uh, probably May uh, mid to late May I'll probably up, update this forecast again but the, the La Nina and El Nino uh, really the patterns that set up that's something that's harder to forecast so I didn't want to put too much certainty into that so I just put uh, slightly below average and I'll update this of course as we get into May so make sure you are subscribed so you do get notified when I do uh, upload that now here is your development, uh, and I do think you're actually going to get above average development within this main development region, uh, really from uh, around uh, the Dominican Republic eastward all the way to Western Africa. I am expecting above average development, and that means the creation of these storms, not uh, the intens uh, intensification of these systems. So uh, just uh, these storms getting pr uh, produced and made, uh, that's where I expect more storms to really get made. So I do think you're going to have pretty much uh, close to normal uh, uh, close to normal amount of storms, uh, maybe a little bit more than normal, but I, I don't think you're going to have a ridiculous amount of storms. I just think that your storms, when you do get them, if they do track closer to the Gulf of Mexico and then through Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, I do think they're going to be more str uh, stronger than normal. So that's something that I think is really going to stand out this hurricane season is that you're going to get more uh, stronger than normal systems to ride through that area. I don't think you're going to get a crazy amount of systems, and I don't think that's what's going to really stand out with this hurricane season. Now, let's get into your overall uh, hurricane season forecast. Now, in our first layer, and this is going to be uh, your kind of uh, 
pinkish area and this is going to be your favorable development region and that was what we just looked at in this previous slide here your uh, above average uh, development and I do think pretty much the same exact area is going to be seeing some favorable development you have less wind shear to work uh, you have less wind shear you have above average sea surface temperatures so there's just a lot of things going for this development region and that's why I do think you are going to get some more storms to actually uh, come through this area now I do expect average storm development or an average overall season over this region from eastern Mexico and then pretty much until you hit Cuba and then moving north into Louisiana. That's where I do expect some average conditions. Now I do think you're actually going to get one or two bigger hurricanes but I don't think you're going to get a multitude of these systems just riding through the Gulf of Mexico. But when, again when they do come I think they're going to be fairly strong with the sea surface temperatures that we are forecasting and the La Nina pattern that does look to set up it does look like you're going to have pretty favorable conditions for hurricane season now I am expecting major hurricanes to ride through this area, unfortunately. I do think you will have probably one, two, maybe three major hurricanes ride through this area. Now, if they make landfall, that's something that we can't forecast that far out, but I will definitely have forecast for those individual storms when we do get uh, those hurricanes to form. But Definitely, I do think you will have a couple of major hurricanes, at least through this area. Now, if they make landfall again, that's something that we can't forecast right now, and that's more of a short-term thing, but it's definitely something that could happen, uh, so make sure you are alert if you do live within this region. Now, a boomer bust situation here, and this is going to be throughout the East Coast, pretty much from Virginia northward uh, up the East Coast. I do expect a boomer bust situation to uh, set up. Now, this basically means you could have a very active season where you get a bunch of systems to just ride up the east coast or you could just have one of those seasons where you don't get any storms to move up that area so definitely that's something that we have to watch and it's something that is hard to forecast that far out really as you get north of virginia hurricane season is very hard to forecast now you it's really just a question mark throughout this region you have above average sea surface temperatures uh, but we don't know how many storms are actually going to track up that that area above average sea surface temperatures doesn't mean that you're going to have more systems rolling through through that area it just means that if you do get a system to roll through that area it has more moisture and more warm uh, warm uh, water to work with so definitely that's something that's uh, really tricky with this forecast is really the mid-atlantic and northeast part of this uh, forecast now that is going to wrap it up for today's video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications so you never miss video when i do upload anyways guys i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye